Be turning, if you will, to a couple of passages that are side by side in your Bibles. Basically, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, 1 Timothy 4, 12 to 16. Those texts are probably flipping one page. You can get to both of them and we will be there in just a moment. Two things before I start. Saturday, this coming Saturday, August the 9th. Great opportunity to fellowship with brethren from this entire area. This is the first year that this has been done. And Brian Egerton, who is with the North Lexington congregation, is the one who's spearheading this, came up with the idea and he's a young man who's really working hard, a good, fine young man. And he wants to have a family camp out, but it's only for four hours. People that don't like camping, you can handle four hours because you don't have to have a tent or a cot or a sleeping bag. All you have to do is come to the camp at Rolling Hills from 12 to 4, have lunch, play some games, enjoy a devotional, and then go home. So I really hope that we will have a good contingent of people who will take time out of their day and go to be a part of that. But I need by Wednesday night to have a count of people who think they will come because the food will be provided and they need to go and buy that food. So I would ask you, I've had some already telling me they're going. So if you can go and would like to, I would appreciate your letting me know I can get the count to them. Secondly, my daughters were swamped this morning, and I figured out why. See, the plan all along was to make the statement that I made, and then as I walked to the back, I would tell you who the real person was. But just as I was walking to the back, they turned off my microphone, so people did not hear. What I said was, someone in my family is announcing that there's a pregnancy. And everybody starts running to Aubrey and Stephanie. They did not hear me say, Rob and Ashley Newman are in my family. Everybody get it now? Baby? Ashley? Are we all on the same page? The other, the other way is Grandpa Daryl. That's the other way you can understand it. So... That's what that is. That clears up the confusion and gets me, well, I don't really care. I was going to say gets me off the hook with my kids. Don't really care. Uh, I did what I wanted, enjoyed every second of it. Now we'll move forward. Have a little Bible study time for just a few minutes. Get your Bibles. By way of introduction, before I get to those passages, the passage that you heard read just a moment ago, did you hear the words? As our brother, beloved brother Paul, in all of his epistles, speaking of them, speaking in them of things that are hard to understand. That passage has always interested me. And it, sometimes in my life trying to figure out a passage, I go, now Lord, I mean, come on. If Paul can't figure it out, or if Peter can't figure it out, how can I? Peter's reading Paul and he can't understand it. Hard to figure out. Well, you see, here's the deal. They were human at all times that they were not writing. And when they wrote, they understood what they were writing, but they didn't, by in a miraculous way, understand what somebody else was writing. They were human with the other men who were writing and divine while they were doing their own writing. That is, God controlling them. So they understood and they wrote, but when they read others, they didn't necessarily understand. So Peter has the same problem that you and I have sometimes. Well, I've been asked many times, I don't know how to study. How am I going to study to figure it out? I can't figure it out. I don't know what to do. Okay, I'm going to help you. And I want to give you some ideas. And it's a way, not the only one, maybe not even the best one, but it certainly is a good one. Sort of sounds like those open doors, doesn't it? 
There's a whole bunch of them. But it's a good one, whichever one you choose. I just give you the one that I know, one that I think will help, and I'll leave it with you in just a few minutes. But we begin 2 Timothy chapter 3. Bible study begins this way. I have to have a deep belief in the power of the Bible. Now, if you don't really believe in the Bible, I mean, if you don't really understand that it is indeed from God, it has a power, it is powerful, then you're not going to ask the question, help me understand. And if you don't really think that the Bible is for you, for us, it's a part of our lives, it is what God is going to use to judge us, if you don't really believe that, then you probably don't care about how to study it. But if you really do, I mean, if you're really on board, if you're willing to say, as Jesus said, by my words you will be judged, and if you really do believe that last picture of the book of Revelation when, when the great white throne and the books were opened and another book was opened, the books right here, another book, God's list of the book of life. If you really believe that this is the Bible, if you really do, I'm not just talking about a mouth that says, I believe it. I'm talking about you're sold on it. This is the Bible. Amen. When you believe that, then you will be able to understand what God wants you to know. It begins with understanding the power of the Bible. Listen to what he said. Here's the text, 2 Timothy 3, 16. All Scripture inspired of God. Be careful with that word is. If you have a translation that adds the word is, that's there for informational purposes, not in the original. Meaning, the text probably actually reads all Scripture inspired by God. There is some that people call Scripture that's not inspired by God. He's not saying that everything called Scripture is inspired by God. He is saying that everything that God calls Scripture is inspired by God. All Scripture inspired by God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It is powerful as it is for doctrine to know all I need to know, for reproof, for correcting when I don't get it right. For doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. I need to know how can I be right? How can I be right? Well, that instruction in righteousness, how to be right, follows the word correction. So if I need to get corrected, I need to know how to be right. The power is in the word. Romans 1.16 I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Paul said. It's the power of God to salvation. No one is converted to the Lord by the power of any human being or any human process. It is the power of the Word that actually converts. The Word as it is, is powerful. Number two, we need to accept, and then you can understand, the power of the Bible and the, what it can do. Not only what it is, but what it can do. Verse 17, that the man of God may be complete, fully equipped for every good work. The word complete is a word that is used only here in Scripture. That's it. It's a word that means it is nothing left out. All that we need, I can be complete with the Word of God and fully equipped. Fully equipped. It's like that used in Acts 21 verse 5 when Paul was visiting with some brethren for seven days. And then he said, and at the end of those days we boarded the ship to go. In other words, 
we were there intentionally for these number of days. We had what we wanted to do while we were there. And at the end of those days, when we had done everything we intended to do, when we had finished what we set out to do, it's over. We made it to the end. Nothing left undone. The Word of God is powerful for what it will do. It will, it will make us complete, give us everything we need, and fully equip us, take us to the end of the journey that we are on. It gives us everything we need to get to the end of where we're going. That is the Bible. And if you don't believe that, if you don't accept that, if that's not something you can wrap your life around, then it's time that you can take a nap because point two won't help you. But if you're on board with me that that's exactly what the Bible is, then let me give you point two. How can I take this powerful word that I know beyond doubt comes from God, but sometimes I just don't get it? Everybody struggles. Everybody has times when they don't understand texts. There have been many times I have taught a Bible class and I don't really understand this text that I'm dealing with and somebody in the class will say, what about this? And I go, oh, that's good. We all work together, we can understand things. But the idea is we all have trouble. There are texts of Scripture that are very difficult to understand. I admit that. We have to spend some time with them. Here's what I want to propose. Maybe you have a text that you have struggled with. Maybe you have a passage that you really would like to say, what are we going to do with this? How do we get this? What, what am I supposed to do? If you have one of those texts, write it down, hand it to me, and we will take some Bible study time spread out over ever how long, not every Sunday night, but periodically, and we will look in depth at that text trying to understand it in this group study. So if you have a text like that, hand it to me. And I will work with it myself. You be working with it because I'm going to give you a way tonight that you can work with it. And when we come together, maybe we've already worked on it and we can come to an understanding together. I remember as a young man, in fact, I think I was in college when it happened. I heard by the guy in Woods, one of the greatest biblical minds that I have ever had the permission to sit and just listen to how he thought. His reasoning process, his ability to work through things was just amazing to me. And I heard him say this. He said, I struggled with a passage and I could not figure it out. And he said, one day, 30 Five years later, I woke up one morning and it hit me. Here's the answer. Well, I tell you what, I appreciate him telling me that. Because if I take that man that I thought was one of the most brilliant Bible scholars I'd ever heard, and he said, I took a passage for 35 years trying to figure it out. Well, then I'm okay if I take a few days myself. Doesn't bother me a bit. So, here's the idea. 1 Timothy 4, starting in verse 12. I want you to notice, not only as we've already seen does it take an understanding of the power of the Word, but number two, it takes a desire to want to know. This is something that you must actually want to try and figure it out. Do you want to know how to study? Here are some thoughts. Look at verse 12. This whole thing is built on a sense of wonder. I've always been impressed. I remember I still every now and then when someone asks, what's your favorite passage? I just say 1 Timothy 4, 12. You know why? Because it says, let no one despise your youth. That's still my favorite passage. Because as long as I can hold on to that passage in my mind, I'm still young. 
That's my belief. May not be valid. May not be able to sustain it in a debate. But I'm going to hang on to it. But that was my passage for all of my life. I love that passage. Now, here's some thoughts that I've had now that I'm an older youth. Okay? Let no one despise your youth. Young people, maybe misguided, maybe misinformed, maybe immature, have a sense of wonder. I wonder. I wonder if I touch this hot stove, will it burn me? Well, I told you that four times. I don't care. I wonder. That's the mind of a little bitty kid. He's just going, now don't touch the stove because it's hot. I wonder. But adults are not immune, right? How many times have you been in a public building and you see a sign that says, wet paint, don't touch? And you go, I wonder. Now, you may not touch it, but how many fingerprints have you seen in the paint? Right? Okay. I wonder. That's how we need to approach Scripture. Let no one despise your youth. Think of it as young people have this sense of wonder. I want to figure it out. I want to know. If you have a sense of wonder about Scripture, you are ready to understand. But until you develop this sense of wonder, then it's just going to remain words on a page bound in some kind of fake leather sitting on a table. You want to take it from the table to the heart? You have to have a sense of wonder. Now, when you wonder, when you have a sense of wonder, when you go, I wonder, notice the phrases that say that in this verse. Look at verse 13. Give attention. When you wonder about something, you pay attention to it. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder what she's like. Pay attention to her. I wonder. Okay? Give attention. It is important in the sense of wonder to give attention. Number two, look at verse 15. I wonder, meditate. You gave attention to it. You have some thoughts. Now meditate. Let it roll around in your head. Let it move around. Think about it for a while. Meditate on what you have given attention to. Verse 15. Give yourself entirely. I've paid attention to it. I'm meditating on it, and I'm putting myself into it. I'm giving every part of me entirely to this study. I'm going to set some time aside, and I'm going to put myself in this passage. Verse 16. Take heed. Oh, you better look. You better keep checking. You better keep looking, making sure that it'll stand up. Take heed. Now, here's how you can study. I'm continually trying to direct our attention to the communication center in the lobby. Deacons, I want you to pay attention to that center ministry area. Pay attention. Put stuff over there. Let's push people over there to, as another way of informing them what's going on. When you leave, I left over there under the section of adult Bible study, Bible classes, a chart that has this information on it. Here's what you can do. You can take that piece of paper and you can put it in the back of your Bible. And when you get ready to study a passage, just pull that paper out, set it down beside your Bible, and just follow it through. What are you going to follow through? When you study, follow through. Number one, see it. See it. Pay attention to the text. Here's your text. See it. What do you see there? Write down some ideas. Here are things that I see in the text. I'm just going to write them down. 
just as they come to me. Right, 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 right. What, what am I seeing here? Lay it out. You know, God meant for his word to be understood. And so you and I have the right to see it and, and write it down. Just what do you see? Okay? See it. Number two, let's give attention to it. Number two, tackle it. Meditate on it. I mean, now find you some resource material. Look up some words. Find some other texts that apply. Use a commentary. Try to get everything you can think about it. Really gather in the material. You just tackle it. I mean, tackle it to the ground and hold it down. Number three, use it. Now once you've tackled it, you've got everything out there, you know sort of what's going on, now put it into practice. How does this affect me? How can I use this in my everyday life? What are some practical applications of what I'm seeing in this text? Give yourself entirely to it. Fourth, defend it. The text said take heed. Take heed how? Don't you fall away? Don't you get tripped up? When you take everything that you've studied and learned, and when you found practical uses for it, now judge it based on what are some possible things that people might bring up in opposition to what I have found. Defend it. Be able to defend what you found in that text with somebody else. Five, now that text is yours. Study, see it, tackle it, use it, defend it. Now it's yours. And now it's a part of you. Now you've learned how to do it. And now you can do it with other passages. And now your understanding of Scripture just begins to mushroom. And the more passages, the more texts that become yours, the better equipped and complete that you will be. So I offer you those study guides for your Bible. Make copies of them. Use them. Study Scripture. That's how I'm going to do it when we do these difficult texts from time to time. If you have a text again, I remind you to give it to me. And we can study those ahead of time together and really grow our Bible knowledge. Hope that was helpful. Hope that will challenge. I hope that will inspire, maybe motivate a little bit. Tonight, are you on par with God? Is He in your life? Are you with Him? Are you faithful to His cause? Have you signed on to be a part of His cause? Tonight, if this body of Christians can offer you help that you need, helping you understand God's Word better leading to baptism, into His family, or helping you grow as a Christian, getting through troubles and difficulties of life, before we leave, let us know if we can help you while we stand and sing.